biggest influence on my career would be my old man, Barry. The clone of Cyclone McGuigan. Um, obviously, growing up in boxing from when I was, you know, my dad's always been involved in it. He was in punditry. Um, my uncle was a trainer as well. So, our house has just been uh, boxing mad since I was a kid. So, I kind of filtered into that. But then, dad trained me as an amateur. Um, and I spent endless time watching him. And, and uh, you know, he, he, he just he taught me everything I, I knew. Well, I know now about boxing. Um, obviously, I've picked some stuff up, some stuff up by myself since then, and there's been other influences since then. But yeah, he definitely has to be the number one. Um, my favourite—I mean, there's many, there's many. There's um, I loved uh, the Golden Boy Oscar De La Hoya when he was coming through. Um, huge for the weight, hard puncher, always took it to you. Um, and then I kind of. Started get you know, watching uh, Hopkins. He was he was brilliant. Uh, James Tony, that sort of shoulder roll, and I started really appreciating boxing. But the one that I really gravitated towards was um, Manny Pacquiao. From uh, from just watching him hit the bags and hit the pads, I used to just watch him training and sparring and just going through you know going through sparring partners. And I just thought that's amazing. But in hindsight, you know, being a welterweight like middleweight, I I probably should have stayed a little bit clear of that. But um, but yeah, no, he was he was my favourite fighter. Favourite fight for me would be um, Diego Corrales versus Castillo, number one. Um, just the fact that there was ups and downs um, and, a, and a high quality of boxing. You know, well, obviously people always say about Gatti versus Ward. I think the skill set, the inside work against. Uh, Castillo versus Corrales was was amazing, um, and obviously, the, you know, being a coach now, seeing the corner work from uh, Goose and seeing, you know, you, you, you better you better fucking get him now, you know, whenever he was hurt and spat the gum shit out, a bit of it had everything, you know, it had it had everything, and it, and it swayed the fight, and um, you know, that was definitely my my favourite fight. Best moment in boxing. Um, been a lot of good ones um, but I had to say you know working with George and seeing him win a world title on the first, fourth, fourth attempt um, you know just seeing him being written off and getting close to him you know and his family and um, just seeing that happen seeing his hand get raised and then obviously what's, what's come off the back of it as well you know he's set for life now and he's he's yeah it was, it was, a, it was an amazing moment that Um, there's been a few sickness um, in terms of fights. Um, seeing David snap his Achilles was a pretty tough one, because um, you know I mean, he didn't look great in that fight, but he, he was starting to get a little bit going, and then you know, and then he snapped his Achilles, and that was that was pretty tough. But I'd say like just the constant training and, and, and then when fights fall through that's probably the even bigger sickness because they've been a lot of my fighters base themselves in London and they live outside of um, they live outside of it and then just to see it all sort of just crumble all those months of, of working and then suddenly ah oh, there's a setback that's probably the, um, the the toughest All my stable are, are my mates, you know, they're all my friends um, and I couldn't say any any one is, is closer than the other, you know, um, I've got Chris Bill and Smith that, that lives with me, I've got Liam Gregor that lives with me in camp because um, they're at different stages of their career but Pritchard as well when he's up, he's just had a baby but I, I'd say it, it, it'd probably be Josh, Joshy P, cause he's you know, another one of my staff and um, it's been Named Godfather for, to his kid, and um, you know George, same thing. I, they're, they're all they're all close friends, but yeah, I'd say probably Joshy B. The best um, opponent that we've faced, um, we've had a few losses. Some have been from injury, i.e., um, David versus uh, Tony, or. Um, you know, uh, 
Conrad lost as well, but you know that wasn't that world level. So the other two would be like um, George versus Callum Smith or or Carl versus Santa Cruz. And I feel that because Santa Cruz is a three weight world champion, I'd have to put it towards him because it, you know he's sort of he's achieved a bit more. But Callum Smith was was a was a phenomenal fighter as well. He's brilliant on the night and very calculated and measured and, and huge for the weight. So it'd be a sort of toss up between those two. Yeah, okay, hardest punches without fails, David A. Like, you know, he's phenomenal power. When I started working with him, um, you know, he was, he was he was quicker as well, so that power was coming in with even more speed. Um, I could fit, you know, there's a slight decline in his in his speed and power as, as the years went on. Um, and I got him at the tail end of his career. I imagine what it would have been like taking him as his early, you know, mid 20s. It would have been freakish, but uh, pound for pound, I mean, George hits like a like a cruiserweight heavyweight. He, he really does. Um, Campbell's a really hard puncher. Uh, Taylor punches. Is able to hold his power through combination, which is why he's so uh, like single shot. He's he's not a, a massive puncher, but it's it's how he can maintain the power in a six punch combination. That's what's what's really scary. So I'd say probably George would be pound for pound when he's on weight. <laughs> um, tough. Everyone's everyone's skilled in different ways. Uh, to keep it at length, I would say Luke. I'd say also Luke and George, really, really skillful. How to how they nullify someone coming in trying to trying to walk them down. They're just brilliant at just controlling that distance and, and then staying disciplined. Um, in close, Taylor by far is unbelievable for mid range. And um, from an, from from the eye, I always thought David was he really knew knew how to break down a, a fight and. Um, he, yeah, he was. He had a great understanding in boxing as well. So, but I mean, they're all they're all really <laughs> talented in their own ways. And you, you got you got fighters that are. I'm I'm working with Lee McGregor, who's only probably 20, 30 percent of what he's going to be. So he could surprise us all. So um, I've given you five answers to to the one question. <laughs> Um, tricky. Um, I think you got to go with Lomachenko. Um, just from from recent sort of performance. Uh, yeah, I go with Lomachenko. Just his just his balance, his his, his skill set. Yeah, he, he sees it in in slightly slow motion. Um, he's he's just he's one of those guys that just. You, you would never bring a kid into the gym and say, all right, let's start replicating him because what he does is just not, not normal. So um, I would say Lomachenko.